It is currently the 18th of February 2021. Of course, we're talking about our tropical system today. This is all ring very well could be named by the Japan Meteorological Agency in the next 24 hours. So maybe by the time you're watching this uh, to our first named storm system of 2021. Also, we have this cold surge back towards the north. And I mentioned this, not just our system, because the interaction between these two is really the big story here. It's not just that center of circulation. I know a lot of updates you get, you're probably just going to get the blanket information on this storm. I, I post stuff like that in a lot of the chat rooms on my social media. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. But in this video, we're going to talk about this storm and the broader impacts and why things are happening. That's what I like to do with these videos. I know a lot of people like that feedback as well. All right, so here's our circulation. You're probably curious what this is. 80 to 90 kilometer per hour winds in the northern portions of Luzon have been reported today because of that cold surge in the interaction, that tight pressure gradient, which is set up out here. So uh, the center of circulation, albeit rough, especially for places like Palau, it's really that broader context and that gradient back towards the north that's gonna create this gusty wind here. We also have, at least at this time, some convection blowing up in this. Based on Dvorak analysis from JTWC, they have winds 30, gusting up to 40 knots, still a tropical depression. But as I mentioned, maybe by the time you're watching this, it will be upgraded to a tropical storm. Wouldn't it surprise me? A lot of things here that does show intensification. You have good outflow aloft. It's over warm sea surface temperatures. And what I mean by outflow aloft, this is upper level satellite derived winds. And basically you have an engine here. You have inflow down at the surface. That's where we have counterclockwise rotation. But in the upper levels of a tropical system, you actually want clockwise rotation winds flowing away from the center of circulation and that's kind of what we got in the northern half of this that's thanks to a cold front stretching back towards the north and east problem is if you want a strengthening storm system that cold front is coming in with cold dry air obviously that's why we call this a cold surge so this is going to one cause shear to start to work on this and two allow that dry air to make its way in. You can already see that kind of happening here on the northern portion of this. So we could still get a big burst of intensification in the next 24 hours with winds up to 50 to 60 knots, but a typhoon, it's gonna be hard pressed to make typhoon intensity based on everything I see because of that dry air. And you can see that here, the track from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, they do have that intensity coming up and then look back towards the west, this is weakening. So I know this looks spooky for Manila. I know it looks scary for central areas of Luzon. I know you are in the cone of air back towards the uh, Cagayan River back in the north. You've seen some serious flooding, I, I know this. But I'm telling you, this is likely going to weaken out quite significantly as it tracks over the Philippines. One, due to land interaction. Two, because of that cold, that cold surge, which is going to devour this storm system. It's just going to eat it right up as it tracks off towards the west. Thus, the main impacts are going to be here across the eastern portions of Asais and northeastern Mindanao. I also want to mention this. A few people have asked about it. The model consensus is in here. There is one model pulling it east of the Philippines. I think this is just the guidance kind of stretching out that low pressure center and it wants to kind of pull it off in this direction. That is an outlier. Really big impacts going to be down here towards the south. All right, rainfall. The timing of the arrival here of the heaviest showers Saturday heading into Sunday. Really the bulk of the rain is going to be on the east coast here as we look ahead. That's where the heaviest rainfall threat is going to be flooding potential landslides even with that as well. This is your Thursday morning. I already showed this kind of graphic for you at the start of this. You have that tight pressure gradient and that's that cold surge and those gusty winds all the way from Luzon, southeastern Luzon, Visayas, and northeastern Mindanao already seeing those breezy conditions. You could say it's from the tropical system, but it really is thanks to that cold surge and that interaction creating that tight pressure gradient as well. So what is that going to do? Well, it's actually going to kind of squeeze this moisture too as we get closer to shoreline and push it on shore. And thus, besides northeastern Mindanao, that's where you're going to be seeing that heaviest rainfall threat here on Friday. Saturday, really, that's when it's really going to start to pick up. I would not be surprised if we see 20 to 40 millimeters per hour in some of these heavier showers here. As I mentioned, if we get that persistent flow, 40 or 400 millimeters plus is possible in some of these locations. Like I said, uh, Leyte, 
northeastern Mindanao. I think that's the, the crosshairs as far as the heaviest of the rainfall is concerned. Doesn't mean if you're back here towards the north, uh, you're going to miss out on the rain. I'm just saying that's where the, the heaviest of that precipitation likely will be. On Sunday, it is going to continue to weaken. And really, you can see uh, based on this model guidance, it actually kind of has the rain a little more spotty instead of organized. That's because of that shear and the dry air trying to tear it apart a bit so some of that moisture could work its way back towards north by monday and the tuesday maybe across north and luzon but it will be a shell of its former self for example this is the five day rainfall five days it is by that point it will be over here look at this doesn't even show much rain at all in the ecmwf guidance for manila all of it is back here towards the south and east now i'm not saying if you're to ignore this storm I'm just saying that Further north, less to worry about. If you are here, especially northeastern in the now, southeastern besides, I've said it time and time again, because those are the points I want to stress. That's where that flood threat will be. One more look at that microwave imagery I've been talking about here. After all of those model guidance, after all that context, I think you can probably visualize what I'm talking about here with that surge coming in. That surge is also going to do one other thing. It's bringing in cold temperatures. I know this is not something you think about when you think about tropical systems, especially in the Philippines, but believe it or not, on the northern portion of this tropical system, because of that rotation and that cold air coming in, we're going to be looking at single digit temperatures in Luzon. Yeah. Talk about a juxtaposition here. Big night and day, black and white difference here. Heavy rainfall, flooding is possible, cold surge with those impacts on Luzon, and likely going to be named. Uh, I hope I'm saying it right, Dujuan, by the Japan Meteorological Agency prior to landfall here. I do not expect a typhoon, but 35 knots is not out of the question, especially given where we are at this time. I hope that it actually has not been named by the time I get this uploaded. That's actually happened to me before. I have the video uploaded. I click publish and then I go to refresh one of the agencies and somebody says it's a tropical storm. So that's why I usually call it a just tropical in the title of these videos. Anyways, thank you very much. I noticed a big bump in my subscribers yesterday because I just asked you guys nicely. And I think there's a lot of you that watch um, based on my analytics. A lot of you watch, you watch with the, uh, you get recommended my videos, but you're not subscribed. If you're one of those people, hit that subscribe button. I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you very much every, for everybody who's helped me out on Patreon. Um, it's invaluable. You can notice my graphics have been getting better. That's one reason. Follow me on these social media platforms. If you don't like these long form videos, I hope you do. You're, you're still watching. It's near the end of the video and you're still here. But if you don't like this, you're pulling your hair out trying to get the basic information, follow me on Facebook. Also check out Pacific Typhoon Season on Facebook too. They have some great information always being shared there with the baseline information. But if you like the data and the analysis and all that stuff, be sure to subscribe and I'll keep you guys posted. I'll probably have another video in about 12 hours. Um, it may not be a green screen update, just a quick one to give you guys a little information, but uh, we'll see. All right, stay safe out there, and as always, thanks for watching.